can see reactions and things coming through, I think. Yeah. All right, we're we're live. This is Pedro with ANP Reacts, and I'm here with Andy from Morse Principum Est. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. And yourself? Not bad, not bad at all. Happy uh, St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, that Australian holiday that we have here. <laughs> This, this. Let me just start by saying this is really strange. It's the first time that I'm doing one of these interviews where, to me, it's Friday and to you it's Saturday. Like we're on two different days. It's it's yeah, really strange. It's horrible. <laughs> I can't stand it. Um, I think all my friends are in bed in England, so you know we may not have so many people watching. I don't know. Uh, don't 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 be surprised. I never know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there, there's it's it, it would it would surprise you how many people stay up at late at night doing whatever, and then they they're watching videos and they're watching these kind of interviews. So um, you, you just can never underestimate what people do with their time. Absolutely, people are weird. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I completely agree. Uh, let's let's get started. <laughs> so the first question that I have for you is: About a year ago, you decided to move to Australia. Why, why of all places, Australia? Well, I decided is, is probably the wrong way to put it. My girlfriend decided, I think. <laughs> uh, she, she doesn't like the UK too much. So she's been talking to me for years and years. You know, she wants to move somewhere else, somewhere warmer. I mean, it's 35 degrees today. I don't know what it is in the UK, probably like two or three degrees or something. So, um, yeah, and she's from New Zealand originally, so we can kind of remain here legally for a while, longer than most people, so we're giving it a go. She's put up with my shit for so long with the band, I kind of owed her the chance at doing something she wanted to do, so, you know, as long as it doesn't affect the band too much, we're here for a while, at least. Well, you're, you're a good man. Sorry? You're a good man. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Because uh, it's it's a huge thing to move all the way from the UK to Australia when the band is predominantly in Finland. So it, it creates. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it does create a little bit of uh, of a workaround that you have to that you have to do. Yeah, there's been. I mean, there's. I think I've only missed a couple of gigs, um, sort of summer festival shows that I couldn't play because obviously there's very little money in music and. The festivals are only really prepared to pay a certain amount and to fly me from Australia costs a lot of money. So um, yeah, there, there's certain, certain gigs that I have to miss out on, but hopefully in the future, there's not gonna be too many of those. We're gonna play in Norway in, uh, in May. So, and they're actually paying for me to fly to play that show. So it shouldn't affect things too much. And plus I can write all the music from here, but that doesn't, that nothing has changed then. I, I wrote all the albums from my home in Bristol in the UK, just emailing Vile back and forth, deciding on what sounded good and what didn't. So I could be on the moon and write an album, you know. But the hard part is getting to the to the tours really. Yeah, that, that's going to be my next question is like, has technology evolved so much that it doesn't really matter where you guys are, that you're still able to connect and work on the music and able to yeah. still put out quality work, even though you guys are so far apart from each other. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, technology is just crazy. Like I'm talking to you, you're in Canada, I'm, I'm in Australia and we're talking about a Finnish band and you know, <laughs> people are apparently watching this, so it's pretty cool. Um, I, I, I try to explain to people and they say like, oh man, do you guys like Skype and like, practice over Skype and stuff like, can you imagine the latency on trying to get a band to play <laughs> in the same room on Skype? That's just not going to happen. That's the other thing we just, we, that's probably one of the bad things about me living away from Finland is we can never really practice. So the first gig of every tour is completely, com just, just completely new to us. Like if we haven't played together for, for, six months and then we just were playing a bunch of new songs i think when i joined the band uh my first gig was in south korea and it was a pretty big deal for me and um, we hadn't even practiced together i don't think maybe we practiced once when i arrived in finland and we flew together from finland but like that was the first time we ever played together really and um 
that was pretty nerve wracking, but it just comes together. I think you can, these days, if everyone is a good enough musician, you can all practice on your own and then just wing it. But I'm not going to lie, some of the first gigs on tours are pretty ropey. <laughs> So, yeah, it's it's uh, this question was not part of my repertoire for today. But since you said that your first gig with a band was in South Korea, I don't know if you're aware they have the world's lar largest penis museum. Did you visit it? Well, of course. I mean, that was the first. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't go to that. Damn. Come on. What do you mean, Wait, what do you mean though? A, a they, museum of dead people's penises in jars. No, like they have like, you know, different size dildos with different colors, different uh, size, like penis replicas. Oh, like, mate, that's just another Friday night for us. That's not <laughs> no. I, I, I thought, you, you know, like, I think, don't they have, in Russia, don't they have Ras Rasputin's cock in a jar? Like his actual penis? I don't well, know how no, they no, verify no. that, but. but well, I, I don't want to be the guy in charge of mummifying somebody's penis. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm slightly <laughs> off topic there, but yes. uh, I, I, I want to just just tuned in. By the way, <laughs> yeah. Imagine somebody just clicking in, and the first thing they hear is mummified penis. I mean, I'm I'm sure they're immediately <laughs> clicking out. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I want to take it back to really your early stages of playing. I, I read it on your bio that your dad was a huge influence for you. He taught you how to play the piano and later on uh, the guitar. Um, I can relate to that having a kid and, and really bonding over our reaction channel and watching videos like Monster and me, like, uh, you know, like that kind of bonding experience. Since I don't play, that's pretty much the only way I can bond with him. Um, was that really important for you to have that that music presence in the house with your dad and then kind of, you know, taking yeah. him taking the time to really teach you the, the, the music side of things? Yeah, music's always been obviously a part of my life. It's always been around me. My mum and dad both sing, play guitar and play piano. So they, and to, still to this day, they're 60 something, 62, something like that. And they're still playing in folk clubs. You know, they're still playing their folk music in open mic circuits around Wales. So they, um, they are, you know, music is totally in our DNA, I think. Apart from my brother, who may well be adopted because he just, he just totally <laughs> skipped, like the music thing just skipped him. I don't know why. But, he's, um, he's the black yeah, of the family. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Um, but he, yeah, but, but with me, yeah, I was always surrounded by music. We had a piano, my dad was always playing the piano. And when I was about five years old, I think, um, I very nervously asked him, I just stopped in the corridor and looked at him and just said, can you teach me to play piano? And then I think he just said, yeah, all right. And then from then, I don't know if I even meant it. I don't know why, I, I just sort of said it. And then from then on, he, he taught me to play piano. Then I had, then he taught me to play guitar when I was about 10, I think, from there. But my dad was actually really disappointed. I think one of the most disappointing things that's ever happened to my dad was when I stopped playing piano because I hated how regimented it was, the scales, everything. Um, yeah, and I think when I was around 10, I just said, Dad, I can't do this anymore. I, like, I just can't do it. Um, but because we were doing grades and everything and it was just stressful, it wasn't fun anymore. And he was just, I think he was just so disappointed in me. But then I picked up the guitar and then I think he realized that it's all right, you know. And, and when it came to the guitar, at what point did, did the students surpass the master? <laughs> oh, probably the first week. <laughs> yeah, because he, he, he plays acoustic guitar, but he has this real banged up old um, electric guitar he bought from like a charity or car boot sale or something for like five pounds when he was a teenager and like when I was a kid, another, another disappointment from my dad, this is getting a bit personal, but anyway, when I was like six or seven, I, I wanted to impress him. So I took his uh, electric guitar out into the garden and I had a bucket and sponge and I washed, like I actually washed his guitar. Like and, if you were uh, in a car? Like a car, yeah, right. So like it was soapy water, you know, I, I really ruined it. Like, that thing never played the same again. <laughs> um, 
yeah, so he came home to that and was not happy. <clears throat> God, but then, right, so when he taught me guitar, I guess he just taught me bar chords, you know? He just taught me, like, here's, here's a bar chord. Now you know how to play every chord on the guitar, you know? And then I, from that, I worked out... The first thing I learned on guitar was the Sweet Child of Mine intro. Just I just listened to... I was listening to Guns N' Roses at the time, and then I was just like, damn, I really want to play the, the Sweet Child of Mine intro. And I'd never really played a note on, on the guitar before. And then once I worked that out and played it to him, I think I was already better than him, to be honest. But, you know, he may disagree. Well, he's not here to... Um... To reboot you, so uh, we gotta go with what you're saying. You're better than him, period. I was terrified you were gonna say, "Well, we've got him. Come on in." <laughs> and and he behind just... door number two, here's Andy's father. <laughs> yeah. the reason he's in Toronto right now, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, that would be something else. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That's that's the story of me getting into music. Really, I've just always been obsessed with music. Yeah. So then you joined the band in 2011. How did that relationship come about of you joining uh, the band? Um, really strange. I was a big fan of the band already. Um, so when I was like a, I was probably like 15 when I started listening to the band. My friend, my good friend, Ashley Grant, little plug for him there. Um, he got me into the band when we were teenagers and we used to just eat fried chicken and play computer games listening to Moors. Then, uh, maybe I was, was I 21 when I joined the band, I think? Something. They, both the guitarists had left by that point. Um, and, the, you know, the biggest problem for the band was Yori wrote all the songs, pretty much. Yako, I think, wrote a few as well. But um, they both left the band. They had no songwriters. So DLA posted on the internet, we need a new, at least one new guitar player. I think they were hoping for two. And, uh, I responded by sending a demo, thought nothing of it. Two weeks later, I think my friend Ash, who introduced me to the band, he just said, you know, have you heard back from them? I said, no, it's, nothing's going to happen. And then suddenly VLA emailed me back and said, um, dude, why haven't you written any more songs? And I was like, what? Um, yeah, I think I was probably 21, and I think it was about seven or eight years ago. And then, yeah, yeah. Um, Seven years, obviously, because it was 2011. Yeah. yeah uh, you were too busy washing your dad's guitar. Yeah, yeah, that's right. No, I was too busy drying it. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, God. Yeah, so then I, they, they flew me to Finland. They paid for me to fly to Finland. Um, economy, obviously, you know, not made of money. But they, um, I, I met them. It was weird. We had a naked sauna. It was the first thing I did with them, pretty much. It was totally fucked up and then i was in the band you know that was the initiation ceremony and uh yeah i've been writing music since for the band it's crazy i i want to get I get started some point some point in the discussion but but there's a little bit of feedback okay so i put the headphones on uh either that or lower the volume just a little bit let me do this okay Oh, now he You're looks good? like a producer. All right, cool. Um, yeah, we'll get back to that, that naked sauna thing because I really want to touch on that. But, uh, but, but, but <laughs> that's what they said. Because it's, it's intriguing. Intriguing. Yeah. Uh, but um, before we do, you know, you worked on several albums for the band. And, and the question that I really have for you is uh, it's, it's a two part question. One is, which one of them was the most gratifying for you and which one of them was the most trying experience for you? Are we still talking about the sauna? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So, sorry. What was the most trying experience? What was the most gratifying experience? Uh, you know, coming to, especially for the first album that you walked into, um, yeah. it, it, like you said, you know, you had the show in, in South Korea you know, all of those things were new to you. It's a band that you you were a fan of before. So coming into the band, having to write to, you know music for the band, it, it must have been nerve wracking. So it was, yeah, it was. It was, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it 
you're terrible. I mean, to me, to begin with, the pressure was huge because it was a band that I had already loved for a few years. Um, I was taken over from another guitar player, and I guess I was trying to write in the same style. So I couldn't just do what I wanted to do. I had to stick to the theme. I had to, like, from the day one, VLA drilled it into me, this has to sound like Moore's Principia Mest. And obviously I, you know, I wanted to stick to that because I didn't want some kind of fan backlash that some weird British kid has joined and now it sounds like, you know, some pop band or something. So my whole, I think it was a year and a half it took to write And Death Said Live, which was the first album that I wrote for the band. Um, yeah, I think it was just, it was hell, like a year and a half of hell trying to keep the same sound but make it n new and interesting as well. Um, and it was a really trying time. Um, but it was such a relief that people seemed to like it, people seemed to accept it as another Moore's album, not just, a, you know, the band is dead and they're carrying on with this other guy. It, it still felt like Moore's been of messed, I think. Um, so that it, was it, an amazing feeling, yeah. It, it, when you guys go to play shows, like you said, sometimes uh, because of the distance, you guys don't get to rehearsal as much as you, you, you probably would if, if the distance was an issue. Is there a song, a specific song on the set list that gives you gray hair, that keeps you awake at night knowing that, crap, man, that song, you know, I'm really going to have to spend a couple of hours, you know? Yeah. Yeah, there's stuff like, yeah, there's some songs I, that are really hard to play live. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think some solos, I think, in particular, where there's lots of different parts that sort of overlap, and I've had to try and rewrite it so that it's a coherent one piece solo that can be played in one take it yeah uh i think uh, i am war the guitar solo in that just goes on and like i love it but it's fucking hard to play um and you know you know what it's like these days everyone's got their phones out everyone's posting youtube videos and you don't want to screw things up but you still want to enjoy yourself but it's not like the old days where you had like acdc like running around stage and just hitting chords this is more like you actually get criticized for not moving around enough like i think someone from the record i don't know if someone from the record label or someone from one of our kind of promotion like tour booker guys he actually criticized me for not moving around enough and i'm like well i'm trying to play like <laughs> you know a hundred notes a second here and like yeah it can either sound really crap and I can run around and look cool or I can kind of I try and mix it a little but yeah um I am war guitar solos pain in the ass I think uh we've been playing um a destroyer of all recently and that can be a bit fiddly too around the guitar solo area but um also the inhumanity solo I have no idea what Yuri played I have no idea what he played so I I, I I don't think we play that anymore, but I used to butcher that solo. I just just went crazy on the sweeps and hoped for the best, you know. Um, so that was a pain in the ass as well. Yeah. So when you're on stage playing, concentrating on what you're doing, being criticized for not moving around, have you ever seen anything in the audience that completely caught you off guard that you kind of like almost forget the note, the next yeah. note that you're going to do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, there's a guy in a a T-Rex outfit, like a giant inflatable T-Rex outfit on the front row. And uh, that was on the 70,000 tons of metal thing. So yeah, you're playing and then you just, you look up and you see this, you're just like, what the hell is that? Yeah, that, that sort of shit happens all the time. Yeah. Actually, the weirdest thing in Japan was we just got back from Japan and uh, I was playing a solo or something and I looked up and there was like a seven foot Caucasian guy. Like, like three feet higher than everyone else just stood there like just staring at me and I, I was like what the hell yeah that was I, I know I saw a picture that there was a Japanese tall dude in the background of one of the pictures <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, know, you know what's funny about that guy I saw a guy just like him at, yeah. at what show did I go to uh, Apocalyptica Apocalyptica came to play in Toronto oh, yeah. Yeah. and everybody was wearing like metal shirts and whatever right 
And there was yeah. this dude dressed like in the three-piece suit. Yeah, yeah. Standing up just like that guy in the picture, not moving. I think they must be related. Yeah, I think so. I think it's a new trend, and I'm, I'm totally on board with it. I think we bring back the three-piece suits, um, and we, you know, we, we, need to, we need to shake this, the scene up a little bit, you know? Because it's always been about being scruffy, and let's, let's bring back some class to the metal scene, I think. Like to the mosh? Yeah, like top hats, tailcoats, you know. Top hats, uh, I don't know about that, because it, it kind of blocks the vision. So maybe uh, yeah, top true. hats is not, not the best idea. What maybe. about monocles, though? If uh, that's, that's that's what I was going with because yeah. especially if they're the Google ones where you can record everything you're seeing, therefore God. you don't have to have your cell phone in your hand for yeah. a whole a whole set. That's you know what I mean? Another great, that's another great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now I should trademark it before before Andy comes with it in the market, and then I lose all my royalties. I was just about to ask: Have Google actually got a monocle that can record stuff? They have glasses. Okay, but. They have glasses, but not a monocle. The glasses are super okay. expensive. I actually yeah. thought about buying them because when you go to the show, you would wear them and you just press record and you can record the whole live performance without having to do anything. That's amazing. <laughs> That's cool. You, you guys were just on tour in Singapore, and I believe Singapore is the first time you guys played there. And yeah. you also were also in Japan for three dates. How, how was that experience? I know you guys played in Japan before, but how was this yeah, time yeah. around? Amazing, you know. Uh, it's always so much fun to play in Asia. We some for some reason we have a big following in Asia compared to Europe. I think we do much better in Asia. I'm not really sure why, um, but I think in Japan, especially they they seem to really like Finnish metal. There's like a big thing for it to the point where they learn Finnish. Everyone's people are coming up to me after gigs and saying some phrase in Finnish. Japanese people saying like da 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 da, and I I look at them and I'm like. Wow, well done, you know, Finnish kind of like pretending I knew what, I don't know, they could have said anything. They could have said, I don't know. Yeah, They could have been complaining about me not moving enough on stage in Finnish. And I, I was, was also going to say, the fact that you don't have long hair could also be an issue. Yeah. Because yeah. if you have long hair, even though you're not moving, at least the hair would give some, some flow to your performance. If yeah, I had long hair. I had, I had it. I cut it off. It's, it's a pain in the ass. No, I, I, don't, I can't be dealing with that. No, that was primarily because of eating. Eating and is a big thing in my life, and just hair going in the food. And also, I had one gig where I was as a guy windmilling on the front row. His hair got caught in my headstock of the guitar, and I mean, like wound around all the machine heads and everything and I didn't know and I just like ripped up for some reason and ripped like an actual chunk of this guy's hair out and that was on the guitar for the whole gig just like trailing off it it's just a, it's just a liability I don't think there's any 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 need to have long hair really well I never and Honestly, I had short hair. I always looked up to uh, Phil and Stumble from Pantera as an inspiration for my short hair, mm. and to make me feel good about myself. That you know, there's a place for people with short hair. Metal. Yeah, right. It's amazing how many people talk to me, ask me why I haven't got long hair. It's it's amazing. Like it matters. Like it somehow affects the music. I don't understand it. I think there's a lot of preconceptions about in in the world of metal should be very inclusive, but it, it turns out sometimes it's not very inclusive. I, I think the hair has always been one of those things. Uh, I, I know personally, I got in a lot of slack. Breaking up a bit. some of my videos where that video sorry it's broken up crazy i can't really hear what's going on you might have to tell jokes for another five minutes until the australian internet comes back can you hear me now yes we're back okay sorry uh, yeah i, I, I think I, I froze there for a little bit <clears throat> it's all good it's all good um i think i heard some of it um going back to the long hair thing 
when I first arrived in Finland, um, one local Finnish dude, we were in a bar, he came up to me and he said, you're not, you're not in Moors. And the guy's like, yeah, this is the new guitar player. And he's like, you look like you should be in shampoo commercial. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Back away. But yeah, <laughs> people do have their preconceptions, it's weird. Well, yeah. going back to your tour in Japan, I have a question for you that I think it's on a lot of people's minds. So four, four naked Finns and an Englishman walk into a Japanese bathhouse. Yeah. What happens next? You guys didn't finish the sentence. <laughs> Everyone else walked out. And, uh, and, and I'm not going to disclose what, what went on in there. But, um, yeah, I mean, in, in Japan, apparently, they don't, you're not allowed to go in there if you have tattoos. Like, I've heard that they close, like, actual swimming baths. They close them. Um, they, sorry, they open them early for members of, like, the Yakuza so that they can have their swim before anyone else. And if you have a tattoo in, in Japan, I think you're considered to be, you know, in a gang or something. So they don't like, even some restaurants, you're not allowed to go in if you have tattoos. So that explains why everyone quickly ran out of the pool when we got in there. So I don't know. Wow. Yeah, I don't know if that's a plus for us or not, really. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Uh, what, a question for you. You you, pre you create a lot of music for um, video games or you work on other Ben's projects. Have you ever created something for something that was not specifically for you or the band that afterwards you're like, man, I, I, I think I'm going to keep this one for myself and and, and make a, another one maybe not as good as this one. Yeah, I mean, I have tons of stuff. Like, I'm, all, I'm, I'm always writing music. I've always been writing music since I've had some way of recording. So since I, I think my parents bought me like an eight track recorder, um, it was a Fostex eight track. Um, and I, I think it was, that was like my 12th birthday. And since then I've always been recording. So there's just like a huge back catalog of stuff. Um, all kinds of genres, all kinds of shit, like not good stuff, like some good stuff, maybe. Um, so yeah, definitely, there's tons of stuff. And there's tons of like, I've got on my phone, I've got like me singing into my phone, like years of me singing into my phone with ideas, like riff ideas and stuff that's never been used. So there's always stuff lying around. Do you sing yeah. in the shower? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I do. My girlfriend's just over here. Do I sing in the shower? Do I sing in the shower? No. No? I think I do. I used to have a radio. When back in England, I had a radio in the shower. So you, you put, press you know, the radio button, and that, that was awesome. There was also a phone in the shower. I don't really understand how that works. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I like of to all sing. Places. Of all places, yeah. 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 So, Andy, <laughs> your solo project. What can, what can you tell us about your solo project? When is it coming out? Okay, I don't, I, I don't know when it's coming out, um, unfortunately, because it's just, I didn't realize how much stuff you actually have to do for all the, because this isn't with a record label, there's just so much stuff going on in the background. Um, you know, finding out uh, where you want to get CDs printed, finding out how you want to sell them, um, how, how you want to, you know, get in touch with, different marketing people. Um, yeah, basically, how am I going to market it? And how am I going to find the time to do enough videos and, and line them all up and to, to have some kind of um, platform to jump off? Um, and then there's like t-shirts and artwork, getting the artwork printed. And there's just so much stuff that goes on. So I'm kind of in the middle of all that boring stuff. The music is written and um, for the most part, it's recorded, like 99% stuff's recorded. There's just a couple of guitar solos I still need to do. Um, so I I hope in the next six months I can get it out. But I can't rush it because if I rush it, then I think you've only really got one chance to make an impact. Um, and I don't want to stuff that up, really. Um, so I, I'm super excited about it. I can't wait to share it with people. But I think it's going to probably be another, you know, three to six months before I'm ready to release anything, I think, yeah. 
I think there's only one chance of making a good first impression. So I think yeah. that's yeah. what you're concerned about. Yeah, and if I if I make a if I release it with no music videos or no you know nothing else ready, it's just gonna it's just like it's gone. I think you've you've got to have everything lined up before, and that's the way it is these days when you're when you're releasing something yourself. With Moors, it's just like we have a deadline, write, write the album by this date, record it by this date, get it mixed by this date, hand it in. That's the one good thing the record label is good for is they take care of all that crap. The you know, only other thing is they take care of keeping all your money as well. So, um, But that's another conversation probably for another time. Uh, you, you mentioned that this is going to be a concept album. You're going to have some guest appearances. Anything you can tell us about those guests, who they are? You also mentioned uh, there might be some singles, maybe just instrumental. Yeah, I think a, a couple of the guests I have in mind haven't even been asked yet. So I kind of need to, <laughs> to work that out. It's weird because I've got like, it's like a Rubik's Cube of guitar players. I, I, is that a dog in the background? Yeah, it's my neighbor's dog. Oh, your neighbor's dog. Okay, cool. Well, I was going to say get the dog out, but... Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like one song. One song would really suit one guitar player I have in mind. But if he can't do it, then I kind of have, have to ask someone else to do that one, even though I want them to do that one. There's basically like a few places on my album I really want to get guests on to do uh, guest solos with. Um, I don't know if I broke if this is frozen again because you're not moving. <laughs> I'm just going to keep talking. Um, but yeah, basically, um, one thing I can confirm is there's going to be some guest vocals from Christina, who is a good friend of mine. Um, are you still there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah? It, it all froze on my end. I don't know if anyone could still hear what I'm saying. Even when I freeze up, I can still hear you, so you can continue. Okay, cool. I will. I'll just, I'll just ad lib. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so the one the one guest vocal I can I can confirm is Christina, uh, go for Christina Marie, who was um, who's uh, she did guest vocals for us on the Moore's album on um, on the latest album. So people may know her from that. Um, so she's gonna gonna offer her voice again, which is awesome. She's an unbelievable singer, um, and I'm also doing a project with her actually, um, like a really strange R and B meets. It's like Mariah Carey meets metal thing, which uh, you know may or may not be awesome. I think it's awesome. It's going to be cool, and that's called Memoria. If anyone wants to check that out, we're on Facebook and stuff, um, and we should be bringing out some stuff soon. So that'd be really good. And you've frozen again, mate. I heard that. Hello. Yeah, we're having some some technical difficulties with the with the connection. Can you hear me? Yeah, I think so. I can hear you now. Yeah, it's Australia, okay. mate. Uh, Australian internet is so bad. I'm so sorry. Uh, don't worry, man. Uh, I, I told you it's those damn Googles. <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'll ask you one last question uh, okay. before I let you go, and that question is. Any plans for some tours from the band uh, for 2018? Uh, and at any point, are you guys planning on making a trip to North America? Okay. Um, we're playing in Norway. That's the next gig, uh, May 11th. I think it's called Karmoy Geden. So check that one out if you can get there. Um, and we are trying our best to get a tour for North America. Um, I can't really say much more about it but we we are kind of in talks with people about trying to get that sorted out but the problem is people don't understand how much money it costs to do a north american tour um a lot of bands actually pay to do it and i mean like we had i'll just tell you one offer we had so you, you can understand how bad it is we we were we were asked to tour north america and um they said you will, you will need us. We would have to pay 20,000 euros 
to do the tour. Okay, so that's the that's the offer we had. Yeah, that's the state of the music industry. People don't realize we were asked to to work away from home for a month, and we would pay the tour booker twenty thousand euros to do it. Okay, we said, "I'm sorry, we need to at least negotiate that we get some salary, something to eat." And then they said, "Your demands are too high." And that was the end of it. So we are always trying to get North American tours. VLA is desperate to go there. I'm desperate to go there. Um, but it's just so hard to find the right tour offer. Um, but I, fingers crossed, we may have something coming up. But I can't guarantee anything at this stage because there's, the music industry is fucked. You just can't make any money from, from music anymore. It's sad. I wish I could... Um, Confirm something, but maybe I mean just just keep uh, keep checking the, the Facebook page and uh, fingers crossed we'll make it over there eventually. I actually have two last questions for you uh, from okay. two of our viewers. One is any plans for a live Morse Principal Mest album or EP? And the second question is, what did you think about uh, Newman Rock? Okay. The first one, we no, we don't have any plans for uh, a live DVD or CD or anything like that, really. Um, we've been asked it before. I don't know if there's much of a demand for that. Um, maybe maybe in the future we'll we'll look into that. Um, about Nummy Rock, I love playing Nummy Rock, but I didn't get a chance. That was one of the festivals I had to miss out on last year. So I wasn't there last year, but I've played there before, and it's it's awesome. It rained the whole time, but it was awesome. All right, Andy. I, I think we're still having some technical technical difficulties. I can hear you, can hear me, but the video is frozen. So okay. I want to thank you for taking the time to do this. Um, today, uh, the internet was not our friend, but uh, I really enjoyed this. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. It, you know, it all started going downhill once we started talking about that penis museum. So I think so. I think we. I think. Yeah, we peaked, and then that was yeah the downfall for sure. Yeah, I, I, I think somebody with higher powers than us is blocking this conversation due to the to the large amount of penis conversation happening I, on this live stream. I think it's for the best. But also, <laughs> I just I want to say I want to say thanks to you two, um, and also everyone. If if you can actually hear what I'm saying, should check out your YouTube channel. Uh, a &P reacts because it is the most heartwarming thing when I saw you and uh, and your son just yeah like there him running into the kitchen after after reacting to the video that was just the most awesome thing and I think people really will connect with the fact that you guys are you know really connecting through music I think it's just a beautiful thing man so just don't stop doing that just keep it up thank you very much Andy I really appreciate those words they're really kind you're a really kind guy Thanks, thank you very man. much Thank you, dude. Take care. Cheers. Bye. See you guys. See you.